Morning everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. I just thought I'd come on real quick and show you how I made those acorns. Super, super quick. And uh, I'm using kind of an oversized uh, ball. Once again, I'm going to do a chunky charm, so I'm making a little bit larger one. Um, what I started out with was a ball a little smaller than this. <coughs> Excuse me, for the ones that I put on the box. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knitting needle... Um, toothpick, whatever it is that, that you're using for your tool. Um, I've got that, and I've got my big giant hat pin. And you probably could do, you could do the whole thing with the hat pin. So I'm going to go just a tiny bit higher than halfway up, and I'm just going to incise a line all the way around. And forgive me if I don't meet up, because this is hard to do watching through the camera. But I'm going to give it my best shot. So there we go. We've got a line, like I said, just a little bit higher up than halfway. So what I'm going to do is, down here on the smaller part, part, <laughs> I'm going to mash in just a little bit our dividing line. So that now we have a cap over our soon-to-be acorn. And then bring your bottom, bring the shape's bottom to a point. Not a sharp point. A semi-sort of acorn-shaped point. And you can just keep on and keep on messing with it until you've got it exactly like you want and there are many many types of acorns and here where I live in North Texas they look like this so we've got that acorn shape and if you will look at acorns in nature they are not all the same some of them are longer shorter and squattier they come in doubles. They come, they come in many, many, many varieties. Now, this top part, there are many, many ways to do this. You can take... Sorry, I'm trying not to bump the camera. You can actually take scissors and snip points all the way around. And I've done that. But for this particular project, since the acorns weren't going to be the focal point of the project they were just going to be embellishments I went with a really simple top on them so that's what I'm going to show you I just took my needle and made evenly spaced and I'm sorry I'm looking beside the camera right now made evenly spaced sort of <laughs> indentions across the top and I said since it's an embellishment it's it's not really that important that they go from edge to edge or meet up evenly or anything like that so there's what we've got so far now instead of going perpendicular to the first row of lines. I want to go at a sort of diagonal. So I'm going to take this widest middle line and make that where I'm going to start my diagonal. And it's going to run in some weird places. And Okay, there's our second set. Now I'm going to turn it around the other way and do basically the same thing. Now 
There we go. That's all you need is a little bit of a crisscross type of pattern. So there we go. Now, depending on what you're going to use it for, run you a hole through the middle. Um, the ones that I did half acorns. Now, I could have done the acorn like this and then just used my tissue blade or whatever and cut them in half. But I actually didn't do that. I did the same process, but I started with a smaller ball and I smashed, smashed the ball onto my little glass tile first and then shaped it. But I did exactly the same thing. I started with the bigger knitting needle with it smashed flat down there, rolled across, and then made my little hash marks after I shaped the bottom. There we go. This one's going to be a big chunky charm. So I will run my hole up through the bead. And I didn't get it very centered. Huh, not bad. Alright. Go back to the top. And because these are going to be a bead, you don't necessarily need a stem at the top. Um, the ones that I glued down, now they could have had a stem, but I knew you weren't going to be able to see them necessarily from that angle, so I didn't give them a stem. You could put a piece of wire for the stem. You could make a little polymer clay stem. There's lots of different options there. But normally when you find uh, an acorn on the ground, it does not have uh, a little bit of stem still attached to it. That's why it fell off. So, there you go. Quick, simple. I'm going to bake that about four, 475. Oh yeah, that'd come out pretty, wouldn't it? I'll bake that at about 225 for 30 minutes because it is thicker. Um, I use a sheet of wax paper that I have baked hundreds and hundreds of times the same sheet just evening up the bottom edge of my cap okay predator I already fed you so there we go into the oven it'll go after it's baked I'll put a layer of brown Let's see. I don't know I have it out here. Mm -hmm. This is what I used on those burnt umber. It's apple barrel burnt umber that I used on the acorn itself. And then I used this Americana, it's called cocoa, for the cap. And I did that, and then after they were dry, I sprayed them with the Lindy Stamp Gang, the uh, Cactail Copper Brown. Really brought out a nice shimmer and it settled into the lines on the top and gave it just a little bit more detail. It really turned out sweet. So, alright, there is that. And I think if that's all I had on that, I probably had some other things I could show, but I've probably already put them away. But I can't show this. <laughs> it's my charm bracelet. I found it. You know how it goes. I was looking for something else. When it just jumped out at me and it said, look, here I am. So I have a video where I've showed this before, but it's been really popular on Pinterest this, this time around, so... I do have a little photo tutorial, um, I have a link on my Pinterest, and um, I have it on Craftsy to do these um, pumpkin beads. Okay, sorry about that. These candy corn beads, the skull beads that I also did a video on, and I know there's another... Uh, I'm not sure whether this one's actually on Pinterest or not, but I know it's on Craftsy for the little ghost. So, 
Y'all have no idea the relief I found. I had when I found this. I was so glad. It was, as you can see, a lot of work went into this one. And I talked about it in the other video that I showed of it. The one bead that I did not make that's on this entire bracelet is that one. That tiny little faceted cube bead. It's got a little iridescent finish on it. It's actually a vintage bead off of a... Well, I don't know what it came off of, actually, because it's a broken, broken uh, bead finding I got. So, that's the only bead on here that I did not make. The little witch's hat. I don't know why I never did a tutorial on that one. This is one of my first rolled in conclusion beads that I made years ago. And somewhere there's a tutorial out the, on the internet for this exact bead. I'm not sure if it was a video tutorial or just a photo tour, tutorial. Man, that was years ago. <coughs> the leaves. These little, let me see if I can get one of the bigger ones to show you. This is also on Craftsy, these glitter beads. It's hard to see with the black. Oh, wait, because there's other color ones. There we go, the green ones. If y'all could feel these, they're completely and totally smooth and sealed. There is no glitter to come off on you because it's all sealed in there. Beautiful. I love that color. So pretty. So, there you go. There's that. There you go. Yeah, I think I showed everything. Very, very haphazardly, I guess you'd call that. But these are the more of the glitter beads. Super fun. This one just has an iridescent um, finish that's actually um, mm -hmm, interference violet, vi violet, interference violet, pearlex powder that I put in the glaze on this one. Really pretty. So, there we go. The lost, not lost. Halloween charm bracelet. I didn't show that one. It's actually a um, lintel bead that's got some gold leafing in it. Oh, whoa, I was totally stumped for that. <laughs> so, there it is. Alright. Simple, simple. acorn bead oh my gosh I did see on Pinterest this beautiful charm bracelet that was acorns and leaves the whole and well it had beads on it too but it was so gorgeous so alright chunky charm in the making there's my acorn bead that's it for now uh, may have another video coming up in a little bit so I'll at y'all later bye now everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. I thought I would come on and show um, me putting together this little acorn charm pendant, whatever it's going to wind up being. So here's what I've got. I've got a little acorn bead. And I have put it on one of these large stick pins. I've had these... <laughs> As you can tell, for quite a few years, they're kind of nasty. Well, they're kind of covered with paint. So, since I've got my two colors of paint, the Burnt Umber and the Americana Cocoa, I'm going to paint the bottom part first. So, that's why I've got the acorn bead on the pin this way. So that I don't have to worry about what I miss around the head of the pin. So, 
I'll start by painting the bottom part. But before that, I'm going to show you everything else I've gathered together. I've got, if I can pick it up, an eye pin, a gold eye pin, and um, I'm out of eye pins in just about every color. So that's why I'm using this one, because it's already made, and it's already made. <laughs> if I have to use a head pin and turn it into an eye pin, you lose quite a bit of your length. So I don't want to lose my length. I've got these, oh, let me start with this. I've got two different sizes. These are a medium size gold jump ring, and then these are some tiny, 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 tiny ones. <laughs> and when you're trying to get them open and closed, you, you will see how tiny they really are. I've got two little glass little spiral beads, and I don't know where they came from. I'm really not sure. Sorry about that. Then I've got these little nugget beads, and gee, these were given to me in a rack. And if I had to guess, there may be some bloodstone pieces, or possibly some jasper. Not too sure. And I've got a Timmy, a Timmy tassel from my friend Steffi, Little Red Dragon Studios. So excited to use that. And I, I may change my mind and get out the one in the uh, antique brass instead of the copper, but we'll see um, when I get that far whether I change my mind or not. Then I've got these three. <laughs> Can I hold them and show them to you? I'm not sure. These three little glass leaves. And again, not sure whether I'm going to use all of these or not. But that's what I've got. So let me get my paints open and get my paintbrush, and I'll be right back. Whoa, sorry about that. Okay. And so I'm notorious for painting out of the lid, so. Goodness. As you can tell, my alarm went off. <laughs> Alright, I do have kind of a small paintbrush for the job, but I didn't want to get too much over paint on my cap since I'm doing the darker color first. And I may have to go back and touch it up, which I sometimes do, but... Never feel like just because you have to go back and touch something up that you have uh, made a mistake or done something wrong. It's just part of the process. Um, especially acrylic paints can be kind of unforgiving. So sometimes you have to go back and touch it up. Not a big deal. Like on the rest of those uh, acorn beads, I did two coats. Sorry about my poking the camera. So. My handy little bead right here. And I'll let that dry and I'll be right back. Alright. Well, let me see if I can get. So you can see where there's a few light spots. And of course you can see the, the brush strokes. Because this is a kind of a thick paint. But. I like the brush strokes and the reason I like them is because when you spray with the Lindy Stamp Gang it gives something for the sparkle it, it gives a place for the sparkle to to rest if that makes any sense whatsoever and it really makes a beautiful beautiful finish when you put the spray on there the cap of course has texture so it, it it has place for the sparkle to rest because it's going to rest in the creases and the crevices. But since the hmm, acorn itself is smooth, or relatively so, I did sand it um, after I took it out of the after I took it out of the oven, just barely. 
that's one of the things um, using this regular Sculpey, and I'm sorry I don't say that at the beginning of every video, and I should, um, because I do have new subbies all the time, so I need to remember to reiterate um, the products that I'm using. Um, this is just original Sculpey, and the reason that I like to use original Sculpey for simple charms and stuff like that is A, because it's very easy to sand, um, and B, uh, it holds paint very well. It has a different texture than um, either the Sculpey 3 or the Primo. And I just used the last of my Primo Transparent. <laughs> so hopefully we're fixing to have rain for a few days. I've got to get on and order me some while it's, while it's cooler. I apologize again for my fish. He's over there trying to get my attention again. Alright, I'm going to give this just a few seconds because it doesn't take very long at all to dry. And I'll be back and finish the top. Okay, while that's finishing drying, I'll, uh, I'm going to put these three leaves together. And I apologize if I get too close to the camera. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. Sometimes when these jump rings are put together just right, it's hard to even find where they open. Alright, did you see that? I just twisted it away from myself. You do not want to pull apart. You want to twist. Twist away. There we go. So, I'm going to fish my leaves on here and the way you put them on there will depend on how they hang so there we go that's what that's going to look like and I'm going to go ahead and close it there we go and these um, jump rings I'm sorry are um, well, yes, they are. They're possibly no name brand. They're called Cousin. And to be honest, I actually think these came from Michaels. Although I can't, I can't verify that, but I think so. Okay, so we've got our leaves. That's why I got out the two different sizes of the jump rings because I'll use this um, smaller ones to connect the pieces and the bigger ones what I mean by connect the pieces, I'm sorry, connect the sections I wanted this larger jump ring so that these leaves would have plenty of room to move <clears throat> if I'd have used that small tiny jump ring they'd have been all two clustered together which could have made them fan apart which I didn't really want, I wanted them to hang and dangle I'll also use a larger one at the top of the acorn. Alright, let's look and see. I bet it's dry. Well, mostly. Mostly. So, I'm going to flip it around. Without poking myself, hopefully. So there we go. Now, I can paint the top. Okay, sorry about that. Make the dogs come in. And all it was was somebody turning around in the driveway, which I don't really understand because we live on the circle. And have a very awkward driveway. Unless they thought maybe this is where they were looking for. But it wasn't. Not the best paintbrush for the top, but sorry, I might better be in frame, huh?
Alright, like that. I keep concentrating. <laughs> if you've never tried to paint something like this in your hand while you're on camera looking through the camera, it's very weird. So I'm trying to look to the side, which is equally strange. I have to turn it and see if I have any spots that I've missed. Any little white spots? Any holidays, as my husband would say? My husband is one of those guys that is. Well, his nickname is Jack. He is a jack of all trades. He was in residential housing construction for almost 20 years. He's done uh, metal building construction, large building construction. Concrete work. <laughs> and now he does large uh, concession stands for um, arenas and bleachers and uh, that kind of thing. Bleachers for stadiums and stuff like that. So. There we go. There's our little acorn. As you can see, the uh, line is a little wavery, so I'll go back and touch that up just a little bit. And then we'll get this sprayed and get on with it. So I'll be back. Alright. I started to do this off camera because it's something I really should have a little bit closer to myself without the camera in between me and it. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see maybe where there's a few lighter spots on the top. That will all get um, hidden with the spray when I spray it with the Flinty Stamp Gang. So, there it is so far. A pretty little acorn bead. It's not perfect. Didn't mean for it to be. Of course, I guess in nature they aren't. So, alright. I'm going to dry that one more time. And spray it. Okay, and what I've got is, and if you can see that, it's the Buccaneer Bronze, and this one is my, one of my new favorites, the Cattail Copper Brown. Love them! So, since I have to spray them off camera, I'll be right back. Okay. Now, can you see what I was talking about, about how the shimmer will hold up in those brush strokes? Instead of it just wanting to run off the bead. Sorry about that. To run off the bead, it will stick in those brush strokes. If you don't um, smooth them out too much. Um, the other thing you can do is, when you're painting on the base coat, is to use a stiffer uh, brush and pounce it on and that will also create texture for your sprays to stick to so the next thing I'm going to do is um, put on my gloss glaze and this is I've said before this is Rust-Oleum water cleanup gloss sealer and you can get it in the uh, furniture finishing section, you know, where you get the stains and uh, varnishes to do furniture. So, let me look over here and get sorry, not incredibly 
horrible brush that really needs to be thrown away and why I have it, I don't know. Because I bought new ones. So let me open this. Alright. No. no paint from the lid this time because I want a good amount. And what you're gonna do is I'm gonna do the top sorry of my acorn first because the sealer I don't know what it has in it but it will move your shimmer around especially if you over brush stroke it as you saw I just I just globbed it on there I was not trying to smooth it out and I will similarly try to do that on the bottom what I usually do is I'll take downward strokes and then just a quick one to finish it up so there we go now as soon as that dries we'll do a little construction and you can gently, ever so gently, heat set it as long as you keep your heat gun way back because you will bubble the uh, the glaze and if you do that it makes it a little cloudy so if you want that glossy glossy shiny goodness your best bet's just to let it dry so Okay, so here we are. Really pretty and shimmery. So, what we're going to do... Fish, seriously. What a pain you are. I have completely ruled out using the leaves, as pretty as they are. Their color... with the copper color is is really just not working for me so I'll save those to use on another project so what I'm going to do is similar to the ones that I just used on the uh, necklace I'm going to start with one of these I'll talk about I don't know whether you'll be able to see it yeah one of these iridescent transparent turquoise seed beads and I was fortunate enough a few years ago to pick up it reminded me of a of a fishing krill which I, I actually think is more what it was but it was a basket a, a tall basket like maybe you would go trout fishing with was what I actually thought alright so as you can see I've got one on either end Let's see what I think about this. Hmm. You're not sure. You're never sure. Come on. Give me a beat. There we go. Let's see. What do I think? Okay, that's not bad. We've got our little loop at the end. A seed bead. The acorn. A seed bead. The little glass swirl bead and then another seed bead and that leaves us just enough left to make our loop at the top it's actually a little extra all right so i bend it over go i don't want a tiny loop but i don't want a giant loop so go somewhere midway on your pliers and what i do is i i uh, I twist it towards myself. And there we go. A pretty, pretty little loop. So, here's my tassel. Let's see, what do we think? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I like that a lot better than the leaves. So, I got my world's tiniest jump ring. And weirdly enough, they, I believe they make smaller ones. These are tiny. Alright, again, I'm going to twist away from myself. But these are a little bit harder to do with your fingers. So, I've got two pliers. And the hardest part of the whole project is right here. Let's do this. I'll hold it with the pliers. Look at that! Isn't that cute? Now, I wonder what would happen if I put just a couple of the... Oh yeah, I think I'm doing it. Alright, bear with me. Okay, what happened was... <laughs> I'm going to confess, I'm not stopping the video to get up and take care of it. The uh, pump on the aquarium was giving us fits. So, uh, Hubby and I were over there working on it last night. And anytime it quits, you have to go back over there and put water in it to prime it to get it to start pumping again so <laughs> there's a little tiny orange cup sitting up on top of his aquarium and that's what he keeps smacking at so I guess he's mad that I've left the cup up there where he can see it so I'm gonna have to go move it in order to get the fish to behave itself and if you're curious what my fish looks like, go back a few videos. Uh, not sure what I titled it, but he's in there somewhere. Okay. Now, I'm going to put one on one side. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> grab the other side and put the other one on the other side. So that they are on opposite sides of the tassel. Does that make sense? Let's see. Sorry that I was off frame there for a second. Close it back. And then we'll hold it again and see what I think. There we go. And those may have to go on their own rings. But look how cute. Yeah, I think I'll go back and do that. Alright, I'm going to stop and move the cup off the fish tank and put these two uh, on their own little jump ring instead of hanging from the same jump ring that the tassel is from and we'll see what that looks like. I'll be right back. Okay. Let's see. I've got already one on that side, so this time I want to go on this side. Look at it up here a second. Okay. There we go. Still doesn't exactly hang the way I wanted it, but without more eye pins, it's, it's all I can do. Okay, so I don't know what his problem is. And I even fed him again while I was up. He already ate this morning. <laughs> so there we go. There is the acorn pendant. Charm, chunky charm, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it the acorn pendant. So I will probably string that on a chain and uh, 
bag that up with the rest of my jewelry. So, I really am uh, working on trying to get stuff together so that I can at least open a store to try to sell some of my jewelry and some of my um, altered boxes and stuff like that. Possibly mini albums. Um, I may have one more video for today. <laughs> It's funny, I feel like I go a week, two weeks without a video, or maybe with one video, and then all of a sudden one day I have four. So, but, I guess you just get it all together when you do. So, there that is. I'm sorry that it was so long for such a simple little to-do, but we did do it start to finish, so. Alright, that's it. I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.